I mean, though, Chris Hayes, I think you were raising an important point about today's hearing, which is John Eastman, who? Why is there so much focus on this lawyer who had no public right. role, who had no public job, who was a Trump adjacent lawyer who was involved in this? But this hearing today was really about Eastman. Is that alienating to a public who doesn't already care about him and maybe shouldn't? So I thought they did a great job to telling the story. The one thing I thought was missing and unexplained is like, why is anyone talking to John Eastman? I mean, you're hearing testimony from the, the, the <laughs> chief counsel of vice president of the United States about, well, we had a meeting on the 4th, and then the email on the 4th, and then a meeting on the 5th. Two and, and a half hour meeting. long Two meeting. And, yeah. and it's like, wait a second. Quite literally, this is just some dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would then be... Would, Chris, who's paying that? But that's the right. point. Is the, the, point question. Is that, the point is, why are you... It would be like getting a, a viewer feedback email, being like, I didn't like that. I'm being your producers. Like, go, go <laughs> meet with this viewer for four hours. Right. It's like... This guy is just a guy. Now, he's credentialed. He's a Ludig and Thomas Clerk. He's a law professor. There are literally hundreds of him like them out there. Mm -hmm. But you the know why he's reason, in there? You the know why he's there? The only reason, which is never said today, he represents the president. Everyone who, who meets with John Eastman, who responds to John Eastman's emails, who takes John Eastman's calls, is doing it because he is speaking for Donald Trump. And that was never explicitly said today. Yes. He is Donald Trump's agent. In fact... John Eastman represented in court in his battle over privilege that he was the lawyer for Donald Trump. Right. So you're watching all this today and you're thinking like, why does this crank, and he is a crank, right? I mean, a, you know, a credentialed crank. Why does he get the FaceTime mm -hmm. he's getting? And the reason is Donald Trump searched high and low for a person that would tell him out there, you can stay in power. But and he found is, one yeah, dude. But, but this and is how they yeah. could have done it, too. I, one of the ways that I prepped for today's hearing is that I read the depositions of all the people who might have been... Uh, the, the pieces of the depositions that have been released by the investigation in terms of people who related to this story. And Mark Short, who's the bald guy, who's Mike's, uh, Mike Pence's chief of staff, uh, they showed a few little clips from his deposition today. If you read the, the, the selections from his deposition that they released to the public, he includes this argument... He represented the president. Yeah. He talked about the president as my client. We had to meet with him. He was there on the president's behalf, and that was both implicit and explicit. And so we had to take all of these meetings. Short made it clear in his deposition. They had the tape of it, and they didn't show it. Well, the, the pattern here we all covered impeachment is... Zelensky is having to deal with this guy named Rudy, who's neither in the State Department right, right, right. nor the Pentagon. <laughs> right. I mean, before... Barr is the AG. He's written a 19-page memo saying obstruction isn't a thing for a president. Right. Donald Trump is always casting about with some mix of, like, the Levine show or the podcast that loves him or Fox. I mean, he's always casting about for people that tell him what, what he, he wants to hear. He hired a director of security for his real estate firm after he saw the guy beat up another guy at a tennis match. <laughs> right. well, he was like, you are mad.